Stan Jubilisco here from the Black Hills of South Dakota with a little bit of technical stuff for you. Calculating the efficiency of an antenna, and in particular, the efficiency of a ground-mounted vertical antenna. And when you mount a vertical antenna on the ground, you have two components into which power will go two main components. One of them is the radiation resistance of the antenna element itself. The other is the loss resistance of your ground system. Now you don't have any control over external objects to the antenna and I'm not going to talk about those effects here. I'm going to assume that you're out in the prairies of South Dakota somewhere where there are no obstructions. Just the flat ground you your radio and your antenna, and of course your feed line, and your SWR meter. Don't forget the SWR meter. How do you calculate the efficiency of that antenna, and how do you make it as efficient as you possibly can? You'd be surprised at what happens with antenna efficiency, particularly when you have a shortened antenna and you try to inductively load the doggone thing. You've got a shortened, inductively loaded antenna and it's showing a one-to-one -one SWR? That's bad news! Now I'm going to tell you why. Okay, so here is what you got. You've got a shortened vertical antenna, and here's your ground, the prairie of West River, South Dakota, somewhere flat, where there's nothing around you at all. Just your antenna, your house, you, your radio, your SWR meter, and all that stuff. Now let's say that you want to operate this thing on 160 meters. But for some reason you don't feel predisposed to put up a 120 foot quarter wavelength uh, tower for your antenna or a half wavelength would be ideal 260 to 270 feet high. I think the FAA would get on your case if you did that without putting a light up there or something. I don't think that's even legal. But let's suppose that what you decided to do was to just have, say, a, oh, a few feet. I don't know, just a few feet. I'm not going to get precise. I'm just going to get in the ballpark. What are you going to do? You're going to put an inductor there in order to load the thing a little bit. And you're probably going to want to put a capacity hat up there on the top. So what you're going to have is a compromise antenna. This is typical of mobile HF antennas, especially on the lower bands, 80 meters, 40 meters, and 160 meters. And uh, 60 meters, if you're predisposed to operate on that band. You've got a shortened antenna. You're going to have a very, very low radiation resistance. Radiation resistance, R sub R. Sometimes on the order of only maybe 2 ohms. Oftentimes extremely low. You put that inductor in there, you tune that antenna up, you hook your SWR meter in there, and to your boundless delight, you find that your SWR is one to one. So you think you're in business. You've got it made. This antenna is going to work great. Guess again. And here's the reason why. When you have an antenna like this, or actually any antenna, but in particular a ground-mounted vertical like that, you have two components. Radiation resistance. And that's a kind of a peculiar phenomenon to define. But it's a characteristic of an antenna that depends on its physical length in space. It has nothing to do with whether you load it or not. 
It's its physical length in wavelengths in space. The shorter you make the antenna, the lower this radiation resistance gets. And then you have the loss resistance, which can occur in the ground, in the antenna tubing or wire, in the inductor, and in your ground radial system, and presumably you would have something like that. Now, the power that you get, the power that your transmitter puts out, goes into the sum of the radiation resistance and the loss resistance. Because they are effectively in series with each other, so the power goes into this load, and that load is a resistance that consists of radiation resistance plus loss resistance. If you want to calculate your efficiency, you have to take the ratio of the radiation resistance over the radiation resistance plus the loss resistance. That is going to give you the efficiency of your antenna as a ratio. If you want to get it as a percentage, you would have to multiply it by 100. Well, we've already, I've already given you the values. Radiation resistance. Fingers work great as erasers. They also get black, but the stuff washes off. Two ohms. Two ohms for your radiation resistance. Now you know that your SWR is one to one with a 50 ohm coaxial cable. So your loss resistance here, you're getting, <laughs> what you're getting here with your efficiency, your loss resistance plus two ohms, that, that means your loss resistance has to be 48 ohms. Because this is your total load resistance right here. The radiation resistance plus the loss resistance is what your coax sees, and that equals 50 ohms, because you've got a 1 to 1 SWR. So you know that the total load resistance is the radiation resistance plus the loss resistance. So you know that that loss resistance is 48 ohms. What does that tell you about your efficiency? 2 divided by 50, that's going to be what? Like 4%? That's going to be 4%. 2 fiftieths is 4 one hundredths. Your antenna is 4% efficiency. Or 4% efficient, I should say. 4%! Your transmitter is going to put 100 watts into that thing, and only 4 watts are going to end up going out into space. If you wanted to get all your power out into space, you can do one of two things. You can either reduce this loss resistance as much as you possibly can, or you can increase the radiation resistance as much as you possibly can. The only way to increase that radiation resistance is to make your antenna taller. And if you make it a half wavelength tall, you're going to get the best deal. You're going to get, say, a 2,000, 3,000 ohms up here. And then you're going to get an efficiency if you still had 48 ohms of... Let's just say, let's just say you were able to do that. 2,000 ohms. Get a half wavelength, 270 foot vertical on 160 meters. Now you've got 2,000 divided by 2,048 times 100. That's almost 100%. It's really close. It's, it's in the 90s. It's getting up there close to 100%. You still got the same loss resistance. You didn't do anything about that. You just made your antenna higher. Well, if you can't do that, if you can't make your antenna tall, you've got to make a short antenna and inductively load it. You've got to take great pains to minimize this loss resistance. RL 
You've got to minimize that as much as you possibly can, and that is very, very difficult. Murphy's going to get you if you try to have a short antenna like that. Now there is one thing that you can do to get a match if you do manage to reduce this loss resistance. Let's suppose you reduce the loss resistance all the way down to zero. So your efficiency was 100% be 2 ohms of radiation resistance over 2 ohms of total resistance because your loss resistance is zero. You hook a 50 ohm coax to that, you're going to get an SWR of 25 to 1. That's going to tell you you've got a 100% efficient antenna, but now your feed line is going to suck. The only way to get around that is an impedance transformer at the antenna feed point. So what you can do is a trick like this. Just going to draw this real quick. Here's the base of your antenna. You're going to need some kind of a tuner. Well, let me widen that out a little bit. Trying to get this in here without taking your whole day away from you. Tuner! Then you're going to run that to the radio and that tuner is going to have to have a very low impedance at the output and a 50 ohm impedance at the radio. So it's going to be kind of like a backwards version of the thing that I described in an earlier video for tuning a high impedance antenna. An ordinary transmit isn't going to be able to handle a 2 ohm radiation resistance like that. So you're going to have to deal with something like that. And But you can. You can do that. But in order to get that loss resistance of 2 ohms, you're going to practically have to copper plate your whole yard. That's about the only way you're going to be able to do it. And it's going to cost you a whole lot more than just putting up a, well, <laughs> as high a tower as you can get. So my advice to you for 160 meters is to have a tall antenna. Period. Stan Jibalisco signing off. Until next time, so long.